Okay, I've got a little video here on uh, finding and interpreting slope. As we learned, slope is pretty much the same thing as rate of change. So uh, the faster you for the slope, the faster you for the rate of change, you're going to pretty much do the same process. So what we're finding in this first problem is they give us a graph and they say, what is the rate of change of gallons with respect to miles? Now, um, the first thing I want us to do is we're going to, we're going to find the slope and we're going to interpret it, but this wording here is a little bit different than what we've seen, this, this phrase, with respect to. And so you'll often see slope defined as the change in y with respect to x. Okay? And so we know from this problem what y is and what x is, because y is going to be here on the y-axis, x is going to be here on the x-axis. Um, but just in case we didn't know, maybe we didn't have a graph or something, we know by how this is worded that the gallons is going to be our y and the miles is going to be our x. So we just need to know that the way that's worded, it's y with respect to x. So the change of gallons with respect to miles tells us that gallons is our y and miles is our x. Now, um, what I always do then is we are trying to find rate of change. We're trying to find rate of change, and we've defined that. We know that rate of change is the change in y over the change in x. So um, that's a rough looking y. I can fix that real quick. Change in y with respect to, to x, or the change in y over the change in x. The little symbol just means change in. So if you ever see that, it's a little triangle. It's called a delta. But if you ever see that, it just means change in y over change in x. So what we're going to do is we're basically just going to figure out, you know, how much y changes and how much x changes over a time period. There's a few different ways we could do that. The first one we could do is by just looking at the graph and eyeballing it. And so if I pick a couple of points that are clearly on the graph, I can pick those two, I can see that to get from this point to this point, the change in y is minus 1, and the change in x, you got to be careful, it's not a plus 1, it's a plus 25 because of the scale on the x-axis. So my change in y would be a minus 1, and my change in x would be a 25. And that doesn't really simplify. That would just leave us with negative 1 over 25. Now, just another way of doing that would be if I were to come back over here to my graph and if I were to use these same two points, I have the ordered pair 25, 14, and I have a second ordered pair that is... 50, 13. And if I were to do that, I could just do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That would be, and I'll just kind of write it down here below, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but regardless, we still get the same negative 1 over 25. So we got this slope of negative 125, but just counting rise over run, but I could have gotten it by actually writing out the two ordered pairs and calculating the slope. Now, we have this slope up here. We have negative 125. Now, let's interpret it. So I'm going to come back down here below. We've got change in y over change in x, and we found that that's negative 1 over 25. But let's, let's define what is y and what is x. We've, we've said y is our gallons and x is our miles. So... If I'm doing change in y over change in x, that's really the change in gallons over the change in miles. That means if it's negative 1 over 25, that means we use 1 gallon, or the amount of gallons decreases by 1 for every 25 miles driven. Okay, so, so here, here's the main idea. Let me kind of backtrack before we do another example. Our rate of change is the change in y over the change in x. Once we figure out what that is from a graph or from the ordered pairs, then I just have to just say what, what they mean. What is change in y? Well, in this case, that's change in gallons. What is change in x? Okay, that's change in miles. And I can just read it. Oh, as, as our number of gallons decreases by one, our amount of miles 
um, changes by 25. So we, we use or, or lose or decrease by one gallon for every 25 miles driven. Okay. We got another problem. This time they don't give us a graph. It looks like this time they're giving us ordered pairs. And so uh, we know that X is written first and Y is written second for each of these. So I'll go ahead and label those, but uh, let me just go ahead and read the problem. It says, the height of the plant uh, in inches, Y, oh, in inches, Y, okay, so they're telling us that Y is inches, after X days is a linear relationship. These are the points that are on the line, and what's the rate of change of inches with respect to days. Now they kind of gave us up here what each of the variables represent, but if they didn't, we would know by how this is read. The rate of change of y with respect to x, that would tell us that y is inches and x is days. So our first step is we are trying to find our rate of change, and we've already established it's the change in y over the change in x. Now we want to say what each of those variables are. That's going to be our change in inches over our change in days. Now, here we don't have the graph. I can't just count rise over run to figure this out. But what we can do with these points is I can use my slope formula. If I call those points x1 and y1, and I call these points x2 and y2, we can calculate that slope. That slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's how we would calculate the change in y would be this, and the change in x would be this. So let's just take these points and put them into this formula. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it looks like I get 10 over 10, which is 1, or 1 over 1. So that means that basically the plant grows one inch for every one day. One or one over one is our slope. That would be like the answer. And if we just wanted to interpret it, we would say, um, what are we talking about, like a plant? We'd say the plant grows one inch per day. Okay, let's do another one. In this one, what is the rate of change of cost with respect to minutes? So that tells us that cost is our y, minutes is our x. Once again, if we didn't know that, we could tell from here. Cost is on our y-axis, minutes is on our x-axis. So if I'm trying to find the rate of change, that's going to be the change in y over the change in x. Probably sounding like a broken record by this point. But that means we are looking for the change in cost over the change in minutes. Change in cost over the change in minutes. Now we just got to calculate that. Now uh, once again I can do it two different ways. This time I'm just going to find rise over run. That looks like a good point on the graph. That looks like a good point on the graph. So if I rise that many and run that many, we got to be careful about our scale. It looks like if I rise that much to get from this first point to the second point, I'm really rising 20 by the scale on my y-axis. So my change in y, or that change in cost, would be 20. And that change in x, well, it might look like it's 2 units. You got to look down here at your axis. If I move two blocks to the right on this graph, or two uh, grids to the right, they'd be moving to the right by uh, 50 units. So our run is 50. This simplifies to 2 fifths. But that's important because that is our slope, and we can now interpret it. So if, if I want to say first, the slope is 2 fifths, that means that um, the cost is going to increase by $2 for every 5 minutes. Okay, so the cost increases by two dollars for every five minutes. Okay, 
All right, I think I've got one more example, and then we're done. We have this table that shows a child's height at different ages. What is the child's average rate of growth? So it doesn't explicitly say, but a rate of growth is just going to be a rate of change uh, per year. So in a table like this, our X is going to be the column on the left, and our Y is going to be the column on the right. So if we're trying to find our change in Y over change in X, that's going to be the change in height over the change in um, age, or I'll put years. So what we would do is we just want to find how much does Y increase by as X increases by this amount. In order to find that, we could just subtract those, okay? Um, or I could just look at it and tell that looks like a change of 15, and that looks like a change of 3. So it looks like over the course of three years, the height increased by 15 inches. That would simplify to 5 over 1 if we just simplified that fraction down a little bit. Let me make that a little bit neater. And then we got to stop and reflect on what this actually means. So um, if 5 over 1 is our slope, that means the height increases by 5 inches for every 1 inch. Year. So if we were to interpret that slope, we would say the height increases by 5 inches every year. So, so that's basically the end of the video. That's all the, the new content I wanted to discuss. But really, I think that writing out our little chart like this is invaluable in, in finding the slope and interpreting it. We've got to write change in y over change in x, and we've got to identify what is y in this problem and what is x in this problem. We've got to know what our variables represent if we're going to um, interpret that slope and actually understand what it means for this problem.